Sup guys, Saivo here. Today I'm gonna tell you my opinion on warrior tanking. Um, I've been playing a warrior and I've been tanking uh, since I started the game. I've been tanking in all my previous games, so I just love tanking. I'm gonna finally make a video about how I feel that tanks in general and warrior tanks in Wildstar should, you know, react to things and uh, contribute to the group or to the raid. Today we're just gonna be talking about small group content, like five-man content or like world bosses, dungeons, adventures, whatever. Uh, we're not gonna be talking about warrior tanking in raids. I'm gonna leave that for another video later on. First of all, uh, two things we need to get out of the way. Number one, I always think that a tank should be a lot more than a meat shield to a party. It's just how it is. I always thought about that and I always tried to be a lot more and give a lot more to my healer, to my DPS, whatnot. Um, number two, there is no such thing or I believe there is no such thing as the best skill. Use that because someone told you or do that because some guy did it and he it's working for him. These are two things that, you know, I believe and the other one I don't believe. <laughs> now, let's see. First of all, as a warrior, when you just hit 50, let's talk about that. When you just hit 50, you're going to have 45 amp points and 41 ability points, which in turn means that your skill build is uh, not going is going to look the following. When I hit 50, uh, what I did was run the following skill build. I did not have power link at all, and this was my skill build. Basically, menacing strike, that's tier 8, because menacing strike is just fantastic. It heals you a lot. Healing means you're more survivable, means you gain more threat, which in turn means you're happier, your healer is happier, and your DPS is happier as well. So, you know, pay attention to that. Number two skill in the priority list, Jolt. Tier four, because why not? Now, Jolt, I used to hate this skill in the past. Now, I don't mind it as much. It doesn't feel as clunky to, to cast as it did in the past. Uh, this is, let me show you how Jolt looks like. This is how Jolt looks like. I think you didn't see anything due to my house roof, but I'm gonna show it to you again. Anyway, Menacing Strike looks like this. Uh, it is a skill that has two instances, this is one hit and second hit, you know, one hit upwards, second hit downwards. Uh, Jolt looks like this. It has a little cast time and Jolt is a must because at the moment in the current client, it reduces all resistances by 6%. Now in the free to play client, there's not going to be any resistances. Uh, they're going to change the names and this skill is just going to increase the damage that this, the particular target that is affected by Jolt takes by, you know, the same amount, 6%. If you make it tier 4, of course. Now, uh, Jolt also generates threat. So that means it's a skill that besides what the damage it does and, uh, you know, the damage that the target takes uh, more, it also generates extra threat. So pretty good overall. Use it, tier 4 it. Otherwise, don't even put it in your bar. The next skill I use in dungeons, uh, Polarity Field tier 4. Uh, why? Because Polarity Field tier 4 is a great threat generation skill. It's pretty lazy to use. I mean, for real. Look at this. I press one button. There you go. GG. I can take my hands off the keyboard, right? So when I'm tanking trash packs, uh, Polarity Field tier 4 does two of these telegraphs. And when both of these mobs, like the dummies would be mobs, they would converge on me because I'm tanking them and I have the threat, then each of them or everyone that's inside that field, if it's a pack of six mobs, and I put this polarity field on two of them, then all six are gonna take damage from each of the telegraphs, which is a lot of aggro. So this is really good and also pretty lazy to use. Actually, I don't really use it necessarily because of the aggro. I use it because of the laziness of the overall skill. Right. Next skill. Obviously, Atomic Surge, this is our threat. Uh, this is our basically to match the highest threat. So if by any chance one of the DPSs goes full ham at the beginning and he gets lots of threat, just pop Atomic Surge. You're going to be right there with him and then continue uh, generating the threat as normal. Another skill that is a must, uh, Kick and Grapple. 
these are two interrupts. I think every class in the game should run at least two. I think personally tanks should run three. If that's possible. That's how I see the game. And that's how I run. Um, I use kick tier 4 for the two interrupts. Uh, I use grapple for a third. So basically kick and grapple have exactly the same cooldown. You're going to be able to use them always at the same time. So always you're going to have three interrupts at the same time ready to go and it's a really short cooldown on both kick and grapple so that's a really good uh, really good thing to have in the game short cooldown interrupt now as a new player you just hit 50 you have 45 amps and 47 ability points this is what uh, 41 ability points sorry this is what you should be running kick tier 4 menacing strike tier 8 jolt tier 4 Polarity field tier 4. Skill wise you're not going to have absolutely any problem. Of course if you just hit 50 and you're with green gear. And you play with people that are in yellow GA gear or even better. Then you are going to not tank anything in that dungeon. If you play with people that have similar gear or a little bit better than you do. For example if you have full dungeon gear. And you kind of are not 100% brain dead. You know just like first time in that dungeon and super noob then you're gonna know some of the mechanics and with dungeon gear level 80 you're gonna be able to hold threat against level 100 geared players without any problem as a warrior tank with this skill build i never had a problem when i leveled up to 50 i was with some green parts blue parts i never had a problem when i got my level 80 gear holding threat against 100 level gear so you shouldn't have any problem either now Continuing as a new player, there is one more skill that we didn't actually talk about. Uh, actually, you have two skills that we didn't cover. So, first one, Atomic Spear. This is off the global cooldown. It is really good threat generation ability. Basically, off the global cooldown means that you can use it while using something else. So, when you use Menacing Strike, you can definitely pop that. Uh, it doesn't trigger a global cooldown, so it's basically like, you know, just instant cast with the flow it's really good to use and really good threat as well and very comfy um, besides that you will have still one more point if you do not take uh, power link which means you don't have the full amps to be to afford power link and the full skill points we're talking now about just hitting 50. i would recommend a mobility skill i would say bum rush is a really good one for tanking if you don't want to take bum rush you can take from the assault tree leap it even pushes you a bit upwards so in some situations taking leap is better than bum rush uh, because leap kind of pushes you a bit upwards and then down leap just goes straight forward so if you want to jump on a rock that's a bit elevated then you will kind of have to take a leap because it's just gonna jump on the rock bum rush is just gonna you're just gonna hit the wall now other than that, um, if you don't want to take a mobility skill, if you think you're good without, I don't really take mobility skills. Don't really take them in raids nor dungeons unless it's a super, super must skill to have. Um, must have skill, sorry. You can take defense grid. That's pretty good mobility. Uh, that's pretty good <laughs> uh, uh, utility skill for the raid. Uh, you can take unstoppable force, which is a CC break. Some bosses are gonna require you to have a CC break, uh, just for things to make it smoother. Or you can take another utility skill, uh, really good utility for the raid. This uh, plasma blast, which basically decreases the damage that the group members take by a certain percentage really good and also makes the mob attack you so that's really good to use at the beginning you start the combat you start with plasma blast you let the dps go full ham and then you taunt um, and then you're good to go atomic surge and you're fine now amp points if you are a brand new player this is how your amp points should look this is how my amp points look i never had a problem with it Three points in the cooldown reduction, because it's awesome. Um, I, this is PvP defense. This is just you know purely for the purpose of this video. Uh, shield. This is a lot better. Maximum shield capacity. Take this instead of the PvP defense. Uh, impenetrable. This is like 
my personal flavor i like my innate ability because since i'm running power link i'm going to tell you about that later my innate ability has a shorter cooldown so i kind of play around my innate ability that's why i really wanted to buff a little bit my innate ability so impenetrable something you know just a personal touch you can definitely take health sponge 12 percent more hp why not even more survivable not like you need to be more um, vigor increases incoming healing this is amazing to have even if you go, don't go further in this tree still take vigor because it's not all it doesn't only increase the amount of heal that you know the healers do on you it also increases the amount of heal that you you yourself have through menacing strike uh, various amp points like mk2 battle suit so you know all sorts of stuff this is really good to take if you don't want to go more in this tree don't go more in this tree it's it's not a necessity this is really good though indomitable i always use it i recommend you guys to use it as well increases armor by two and a half percent stacks five times every time you take damage pretty self-explanatory and i think it's a must now in the support tree i take support power if you have dungeon gear level 80 you won't necessarily need deflect to go like into deflect uh, this is going to be changed anyway so support power take this uh, now in the tier 2 uh, amps kinetic buffer i take this because it reduces all the damage when i'm above 500 kinetic energy which as a tank you're kind of always above it because you're always poking the boss i do take this um full force this i take because shit there is always some guy in the party that does so much damage that you as a warrior tank are gonna struggle to take back or there are some mechanics in the boss fight in which you kind of need to always also run away but the mechanics are only around the boss so you cannot attack as a melee but that motherfucker in the back that spellslinger he keeps pumping that boss so yeah you know i take this just to be safe uh you should too Another thing that you can uh, you can take from here, and I do advise taking this, Fortify increases armor when shields are active. Take it now, take it in the free-to-play client, it doesn't, just, just doesn't matter, just take it. Um, one other thing, to the pain, this is, uh, I call it the new bump. It, first of all, it requires 6 amp points, and second of all, you shouldn't be dying as a tank anyway and you shouldn't be dying as a warrior tank but but i have an explanation i play um sometimes with uh, i think i just exited a run in which um the healer was super new he just uh, he just was like brand new to the game and i think i have this from the previous run um when your healer is super new or when all of you are super new because that can happen uh, having this is a lifesaver also when you want to do a dungeon run without healer because we kind of do that every day these days i don't know for what reason uh four dps one tank and we go uh this is also really good as well now with 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 good gear you're not gonna need this in dungeon because mobs and bosses are not gonna hit you for shit I take it just to be 100 percent safe i kind of do some pretty dodgy moves at times um i kind of you know pull this and that and this and that and i you know stack two mobs that shouldn't be stacked together uh you know just for the sake of a challenge so this is very situational i recommend you using it if you're a new player uh this can save your ass many times because you're not going to know every single mechanic but if you're already experienced i definitely would recommend you taking this off and in the dungeons Take something else. Uh, take this one, MK2 Battle Suit. Take uh, Reserve Power, for example. These are really good skills that you can take if you feel comfortable enough not to take to the pain. I mostly never have to the pain unless I told you healer is super new or um, we do it without healer. Then I take it. Otherwise, no way, Jose. If you are not a new player, when you get to have all the amp points and ability points, now comes the most important part and please remember this this is really important um one skill that you should take just take this motherfucker off it is called power link so i take unyielding and speed burst because being faster in 
Wildstar is always better. Uh, so I take Unyielding, I take uh, Speed Burst, I take Power Link and the other two points or four points in the free to play client I would definitely put into a reserve power for example. So now I unlocked the Power Link skill, I use Power Link as a tank all the time. I use it in dungeons and I use it in raids. And let me tell you one thing, I play with people that have my gear or better DPS. I never lost aggro a single time with any of them. Unless from minute, from second zero, they just go full ham in and then, you know, I do some sort of rotation mistakes and I cannot, you know, take the aggro back at that particular time. Um, other than that, you won't ever have a problem with threat or being survivable if you run power link. Now, if you go back to the amps, you can see that the 10 amp points that you get by farming are exactly 10 amp points that you should spend in this utility tree. It doesn't influence at all anything else that you might have here. Of course, I do understand that instead of spending 10 here, you can take a health sponge, you can take a reserve power and shit. If you want to, you can just take health sponge and the new bump. So, you know, I totally get it. They are cool to, it's cool not to run power link, but it is cooler to run power link. I repeat, run power link, this is the best advice I can give you. You won't have a problem and you will definitely not have a problem in the next patch either. In the free to play. I'm not gonna say it again, I just wanted to say run power link, but I'm not gonna say run power link. <laughs> now. I run power link, I never had a problem with power link. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, I think that a warrior tank doesn't really give anything special to the group if you don't run power link and jolt. So as a stalker for example, all your group members take less damage if you're the one tanking. As an engineer you can give them, oh my god, decrease armor 20% what not. As a warrior. Nobody really wants warrior tanks, you know, that's the harsh truth. I mean, they want them, but not as main tanks, right? Because any other class can do it as well. Uh, it's a bit harder because they are a bit squishier. But any other class can tank any other boss if they are skilled enough. So as a warrior tank, it's pretty sad to just, just be like a fucking potato. They are not doing anything. Not even a power link, not even a jolt. So that's why raids prefer to take engineer main tank, stalker off tank and warrior support, like a warrior potato in the back, uh, putting power link, jolt and smackdown. Why not take it as a tank and make yourself more interesting? Why not take it as a tank? Why not take power link as a tank and make your group do 6%, 8% more damage? Why not? Why not make your own innate ability be 30% faster in cooldown? Because it's like a one minute in, uh, ability and popping your innate plus being a warrior equals God. Pretty simple. If, it's, if your innate is 30% less cooldown, which the power link tier 4 does for you, then you're, you can play God more often and that's really cool. I'm not gonna say take power link again, but that's it. Anyway, this is the build I run in all the dungeons. Um, about raiding, I'm gonna talk about that in the next uh, video. I do know guys that uh, in the free to play client, there's gonna be this awesome ability called bolstering strike. And it's gonna be so amazing that everyone's gonna run it. It's gonna be tier eight. I'm gonna run it myself, but I am probably maybe not gonna run it in dungeons. If I was to run bolstering strike in dungeons, which I kind of thought about it and it does seem like a good idea, then I'm gonna do this. Take off polarity field, take off, uh, not, not take off kick completely, but take the points off the kick and then run um, bolstering strike because it needs to be tier eight. So you need to have full ability points and then this is how you're gonna look. Menacing strike tier eight, jolt tier four, bolstering strike tier eight, and of course the unmentioned ability, because I'm not gonna say the name again, tier four as a must. Um, if I want an extra interrupt, I will take off atomic spear and I will add for example, a flashbang and, you know, 
that's gonna be my build in dungeons uh, when the free to play patch hits us because bolstering strike is just too good to refuse at that point at least if they keep it as it is now in the in on the closed beta server other than that i wish you guys all the best uh, don't be afraid to be a warrior tank in dungeons don't be afraid to be a warrior tank in general if you want to be a melee tank and if you want to he wear heavy don't be a pussy go yolo don't go full retard stay safe guys don't be crazy if you like the video subscribe and you can just leave me comments what would you like me to talk about uh, hopefully something to do with warriors or the game because i kind of suck at spell slingers <laughs> so i wish you guys all the best have fun bye bye